We are going to start this section, uh, TS3, Image and Video Analysis. Uh, I'd like to remember the authors. That is a um, 20 minute presentation with uh, five minutes for questions. And uh, we need to be strict on this timing. Uh, the first paper is going to be presented by Fernanda Andaló from Unicamp, uh, with the co authors Gabriel Taubin from Brown University and Siam Goldenstein from Unicamp. The title is Solving Image Puzzles with a Quadratic uh, Programming Formulation. Fernanda, feel free. Um, so, my name is Fernanda. I'm going to present uh, this work entitled Solving Image Puzzles with a quad Quadratic Programming Formulation. Um, I'm a PhD student at Unicamp, and this is a joint work with Professor Tobin from Brown University and also with Professor Siomi, from, also from Unicamp. So um, uh, here we are dealing with jigsaw uh, puzzles. A uh, jigsaw puzzle is a tiling problem that consists on combining, on assembling uh, tiles together based on their shape or their color information. Uh, the goal here is to reconstruct a single image or plane. Uh, this is known to be an NP complete problem because uh, we don't know any affinity function between the tiles they are 100% uh, accurate. So besides that, uh, several scientific problems can be uh, mapped to 2D or 3D jigsaw puzzles. So here I have uh, two examples. The first one, um, <laughs> is the assembling of um, uh, archaeological artifacts uh, to form a unique uh, 3D object. And the second application, is uh, the, the assembling of uh, paper uh, paper tiles uh, that ca that comes from a shredded document. So uh, when we think about jigsaw puzzles, what comes to mind is uh, the the traditional formulation. So uh, here we, uh, we think about uh, an image with tiles uh, with different shapes, but in this pro in this uh, work. We are dealing with this kind of jigsaw puzzles. We have a, an image divided into uh, regular rectangular tiles. So uh, you can note that um, we cannot work with any shape information because uh, every tile has the same shape. So there are two recent methods in literature that uh, deals with this problem, this formulation. The first one is by Shaw. Uh, he uses a, a loopy belief propagation to um, uh, reconstruct the image, but he uses uh, some a priori information. Uh, the user must um, fix some tiles in place so that he can rec reconstruct the whole image. And this uh, uh, method can work w uh, with up to 432 tiles. Uh, the current state of the art is by Pomeranz. Uh, he uses a greedy formulation. Uh, he doesn't need any prior information, and he can work. Uh, he can uh, work with up to 3,300 square tiles. So, if you think about the problem of reconstructing a document, a shredded document, um, when you uh, uh, when you put a, a, a paper in a shred, uh, shredding machine, sometimes you get tiles, rectangular tiles. So, uh, none of this. Uh, uh, None of these uh, two works can be applied to this uh, problem because they work with only with square tiles. So here we are presenting a new method that can uh, work with rectangular tiles, and it's called PSQP, Puzzle Solving by quad Quadratic Programming. Uh, we don't need any a priori information, and we can work with uh, up to uh, 3,300 rectangular tiles. And it also challenges the state of the art. So here's the problem definition. Um, we have some tiles, n tiles, and we have an empty grid of the same size of the puzzle size. So what we want to do is an assignment of these uh, tiles in this empty grid. Uh, it, it's like a, a permutation of these tiles into these grids. 
uh, for this, I, I define a, compat a compatibility measure. So for each, uh, uh, for each pair of tiles, T i and tj i define two local matching compatibilities ch uh, ij and cv ij this means that if i put two tiles together horizontally they will they will have a compatibility to be together horizontally and vertically so um if uh, by defining these uh, compatibility measures i can uh, define my problem as to maximize this global matching function so given given a, a permutation pi uh, I will uh, compute, I will sum the compatibilities of uh, uh, horizontal compatibilities between the tiles and the vertical compatibilities between the tiles. And I want to maximize this function over all permutations of, of, of uh, any elements. But this is a really hard combinatorial problem. So what we want to do is reformulate this problem as a constrained continuous optimization problem. And we also want to extend the domain of uh, this function to the set of doubly stochastic matrix. Um, we, we are, uh, the, the, in this original formulation, we, we are, uh, the domain is the set of uh, permutation matrices, and we want to extend it to the domain of a stochastic matrix. Uh, by doing this, we can solve this problem by using a numerical method. So uh, here's the original formulation. I want to maximize this global matching function. Um, but you can see that uh, this uh, permutation pi can be represented in a permutation matrix where I have just one element equals to, equal to one in each row and one element equals to one in each uh, column. So by doing this, I, I have this equivalent energy function uh, where uh, the, the matrix P is representing the permutation between the tiles. So um, uh, you can see that each one of these terms is a homogeneous quadratic function. And if we sum up all these terms, this will also be a homogeneous quadratic function. And because of that, we can represent the columns of the matrix P in a vector. We can stack up each, uh, each column of matrix P in a unique vector of dimension n squared. So by doing this, I get this um, uh, matching function. So here, it's the same matching function. Um, in the, uh, we can represent this matching function in, in a canonical form. P transpose AP considering this A to be a symmetric n squared by n squared matrix. So this is the final um, global matching function. Um, so here I have the tiles. I want to assign uh, a, a permutation of these tiles to these locations, and this is matrix C, uh, matrix I. So this is my problem formulation. Okay, uh, the other thing I wanted uh, to do is to extend the domain, uh, the domain of the function, the, the, the global matching function. This is what I'm doing here. So uh, the problem consists in maximize F, uh, the, the P transpose AP subject to these constraints because I'm working with stochastic matrices. matrices. So uh, these constraints are saying that each row of the of the, the, the matrix must be equal, the, the sum of the elements of the matrix must be equal to one. In each column, I have the same thing. Each column must be equal to one, the sum of the elements. And here, I'm saying that all the, the, the elements must be uh, uh, greater than zero. It must be positive. Uh, so uh, this problem, we can solve it by uh, using a numerical method. Here, we are proposing a modified, modified constraint gradient ascent approach with gradient projection. So I'm gonna show this, um, this numerical method now. So this is the algorithm that we use to solve the problem. We start from uh, PIG equal to uh, one over N. So you can see that this satisfies, it's a good start, the starting point, because this satisfies all the constraints. Um, the, if I sum all the elements in one row and one column, it will be equal to one, and also it's positive. So uh, after that, I have to compute the, the gradient of the function f in, on, in point p. And with this gradient, I would like to um, update point p. Uh, but if I do this, I will problem, probably end up outside the, the, co the constraints, outside the feasible region. So what I do first is that I project the, the, the gradient uh, d uh, onto the subspace orthogonal to the space defined by the equality constraints. Uh, and I get another um, ascent vector C. 
now I can update safe, uh, safely uh, the point P. So P will be uh, P plus a step uh, multiplied, uh, a proportional step of vector C. Um, so uh, by doing this, we'll have a P inside of the, the feasible region. Uh, but, but because we have, we are working in, a, in the set of stochastic matrix matrices. Sometimes I will get uh, uh, variables equal equal to one, and sometimes equal to to zero. So when I get variables equal to equal to zero, I just clamp them to zero. I don't want to update them anymore. They are at the boundary of the feasible region. And if I get um, variables equal to one. I want, to, I want this variable to stay at the boundary. I don't want to update it anymore. And uh, I can reduce the dimensionality of the problem by one because I assign that uh, correspondent tile to that location. So here, uh, because pij is equal to one, I will assign the, the tile, uh, tile i to, to the location j. So by doing this, uh, I will uh, iterate until all the tiles, tiles uh, have been assigned. So I will have a permutation uh, at the final step. But sometimes, because uh, we are dealing with a uh, non-concave function, the, the function is positive uh, inside the feasible region, but it's not, not concave. Sometimes we will get something like this. We'll have the initial configuration, the initial permutation, and my final permutation will be this. You can see that it, this is just a shift of the right um, permutation. So the final step is to test for each shift horizontally and vertically, I will test what's the best solution according to the global matching function. So the best solution here is this, uh, is this image. So it's the right um, solution. So I, I have this, that, that algorithm in the final step, I will test uh, the image, the, the final per permutation with these shifts. So um, I have now the algorithm, I have the problem formulation, I just need a way to, comp to compute the compatibility between the tiles. So um, um, I'm considering here the tiles as uh, t, uh, t by t by, by three matrices. This three is because uh, we have three color channels. And we also consider the prediction based dissimilarity by, uh, proposed by Pomerance. This prediction base it works like this. I have two tiles next to each other, to each other and uh, they share a boundary, right? So for each pixel of the first, uh, with the first tile, I will predict the, the pixel of the next tile. And I will take the difference between the prediction and the, the actual value of the pixel. So this, this prediction uh, function here does this, exactly this. But uh, you can see that th there are some parameters, P and Q. And what Pomerance does is he just uh, fixes this, this P and Q to a certain value. What we find out is that um, What we find out is that if we do not fix these values, but instead uh, test some uh, set of parameters, we can obtain higher accuracy. So we used a training set of images to find these intervals. So what I do is I get uh, three sets of P and Q, and I, get the be I run the, my method with these three sets, and I get the, the best result. So we are not fixing these values to a certain, uh, this P and Q to a certain value. But so by um, by proposing this this prediction uh, based similarity, we can uh, come to this compatibility between uh, two tiles. Um, so this is the compatibility between between uh, or the horizontal compatibility between uh, tiles T I and T J. We are introducing here this, um, this term, phi i, because um, the, the compatibility is a local measure. You can only uh, look at this compatibility at, at the boundary of the tiles, of each pair of tiles. So uh, if we imagine um, an, an image with a uh, sky and a mountain, for example, if we choose two, two uh, tiles in the sky and two tiles in, this, in the mountain, what we'll end up with is it is uh, it's more uh, it's uh, if we take these two uh, tiles in sky and look at them, it's uh, probably it will prob probably have a lower uh, prediction based dissimilarity than the mountain because we have less texture than the mountain, and I want to um, 
give us a global sense to this compatibility uh, between the tiles. So this phi i is exactly this. So if I order the, the pred values in order, uh, this, this phi i is the location of tj in relation to ti, some, uh, some, adapt, some adapt with the location of tj in relation to ti. So I get, uh, so I get a global sense to this compatibility uh, between two tiles. Okay, so uh, we have our algorithm, we have the compatibility between the tiles. Now uh, we want to test if this works. Um, to compare our uh, solution to the solution uh, provided by Pomerans, we use two uh, comparison measures, two metrics here. The direct comparison, I have, I have my final permutation and I, I have the ground truth permutation. This direct comparison will compare these two, uh, uh, these two permutations directly. One, by, uh, one element by one. In the neighbor comparison, uh, we'll look for, for the right neighbors to each tile. It, uh, it will uh, compute the, the, the number of uh, right assigned neighbors. So we did uh, three comparative tests. Uh, first with 20 images forming puzzles of 400, 432 tiles. And this is um, the, the direct comparison and this is the neighbor comparison for, for our method. And this is the, the same thing for Pomerans et al. So you can see that we get higher accuracy in this test images. And we also did uh, some tests forming uh, with 20 different images forming puzzles of 540 tiles. And we also get higher accuracy here. So 90.6, 95.3 against 83.5, 90.5. 90, 90 in the last uh, uh, experiment, I used uh, 20 different images to form puzzles of 805 tiles. And we also get higher, higher accuracy according to these metrics. So here I, I will show you some visual examples the first image is the, the original image, the input image. This is the, 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 the initial f uh, uh, permutation. This is our uh, solution, and this is Pomeran's solution. So you can see that there are some tiles out of place here, right? And our is uh, perfect. This is another one. This is with 432 tiles. So this is the original image, the, the initial permutation, our result, and Pomer Pomeran's result. So you can see here the top of the buildings is not right. Another example, here our result and Pomeranz result. And also this is the last example with 40, 432 tiles. Uh, this is an example uh, with 440 tiles. Uh, this is our result and this is Pomeranz result. So you can see there is a, a, a some tiles here that, that uh, are not correctly assigned. And this is an example of, of uh, with 805 tiles. Um, here you can see uh, some out of place tiles also. Um, as I said to you, uh, we also can uh, solve problems with known uh, square tiles with uh, uh, any uh, rectangular tile. So here's an, and th there's no way to compare this to Pomeranz, Pomeranz because uh, he, can, he can't uh, handle this kind of puzzle. So here we have tiles of f uh, 56 and four, uh, by 14 pixels, and our result is perfect also. And this is another example, the, the initial uh, configuration and our result. Uh, we, also, uh, we have also tested our, our uh, solver with uh, larger puzzles. So this is the result to, uh, to, uh, to a puzzle of, of with uh, 2,360 tiles. It's uh, perfectly, uh, uh, the permutation is, is perfect. And here it's a larger example with 3,300 tiles. Okay, so um, it's also 100% accuracy, of accuracy uh, using both metrics, met, 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 metrics. Yeah. So uh, this is concludes my talk. I have presented the new formulation to solve image puzzles. Our method is called PSQP, puzzle solving by quadratic programming. It challenges the state of the art because we get better accuracy and we, and we can also solve puzzles with rectangular tiles. So that's it. We have a few minutes for um, questions. Um, so 
If anyone has any question, please raise. Okay. You go there, please. Hi. Hello. I have three questions or one question in three parts. Okay. <laughs> uh, first is, uh, what if uh, your puzzle has uh, more than one solution? Uh, this is the first one. The second is, what if it doesn't have any solution at all? And then uh, the last is a little bit uh, on a different, you know, like, uh, kind of a different flavor. Is uh, can you handle like a different topology, like a, you know, a torus topology or like a, a circular topology? Okay. So uh, the first question was uh, uh, if, sorry, I, <laughs> this is. If the puzzle doesn't uh, has more than one solution, solution, which solution you get? Okay, uh, uh, we'll always start from a, a correct image. So we want to get uh, we we co uh, we compare our solution with the, the original image. So we will have always one solution. Yeah, but I'm saying I mean like a, your it's image. It's just like a, jig a jigsaw puzzle. You always yeah. have a, 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 a ground truth. Yeah. But I'm saying I mean your image must uh, could have like a, a many symmetries. And all of yes, them yes. are correct. Uh, and I mean, um, if you compare with one of them, uh, maybe that's not yeah, the maybe, yeah. uh, right one that mm -hmm. you got in the end. Do you have any control what kind of, uh, you know, your gradient uh, accent method uh, is, is going to kind of uh, search and uh, which one, uh, you know, like uh, this happens when I, this? yes, this happens when, uh, 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 for example, I have uh, uh, tiles with equal content. If I have, for example, a sky that is all white, this, uh, the permutation between these tiles doesn't matter. No, but this is different I'm talking about because a global thing, like let's say, uh, you could have like a, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, diagonal symmetry, you know, like that, uh, like uh, either like a, yeah, you it's know, true. like a, yeah. a, a reflection of that would be tr also valid, right? Yeah. And it, then what, which one do you get? Yeah, you are right, but uh, here we are comparing with the exact solution, but you are right, you, you can have several uh, solutions. Uh, there is yeah, one but in that case, I mean, you have like a, a perfect image that would be correct based yeah, on and the I'm contents not of the tile, here. but uh, when you yeah. compare with, uh, you know, the image you start with, it's totally wrong. I mean, like it's uh, like zero. Yeah, it's true. Then. Yeah, I, I don't have any ways to, to, to do this in this method, but you are right. You, yeah, no, you are right. I, I, yeah. so I encourage you to kind of look for, you know, uh, kind of a ways to uh, you know, intuition based on the gradient mm -hmm. descent or accent, depending on your mm -hmm. sign of your function. You know, what area of the energy function is exploring? Like, you know, going there, going there, because, you know, in mm -hmm. that case, I mean, like, uh, you have more than one solution, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, you're it, right. You know, mm -hmm. like a, it, and also, like, a, if it depends on where you start, like, because, you know, like, mm -hmm. a, you're always going to go there or, like, a, you know, uh, because this would be an interesting thing, it's a practical mm -hmm. case, right? Mm -hmm. And you could test with real examples, yeah, it's right? Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. And the other things, like, uh, if it has no solutions in the sense that it doesn't have, like, a, a real solution, but, uh, you know, we could get an approximate solution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, do you um, have made any tests with this? No, I mean, no. Like no. We, we, are, we always compare it for, if a ground truth. So, it's, it's also possible to think about that, but we haven't done that. Yeah, because the interesting thing would be, like, a, you know, you take a real image, right? And then you kind of uh, put like some perturbation, not necessarily random, but some perturbation. And that perturbation is going to generate, you know, something that is not the uh, 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 the image, right? And then you could, you know, make this perturbation uh, not globally, but uh, like for each, uh, you know, tile individually. So in that case, I mean, like you wouldn't have a, a, a correct solution. Mm -hmm. But since you are like doing optimization, like a your, your maxima could, could, like, could get like something, you know, that is like a, a reasonable, that looks like a, a real image, but uh, it will be like approximate. So this, I think, is something interesting to think about. And lastly, about the topology. Yeah, we, we will have to change the problem formulation. Uh, uh, instead of using a grid, probably we can have another, uh, uh, like a, th a torus or something. I think we will work. I, 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 I can think. Uh, yeah, my uh, what I uh, I also also have intuition that uh, could work, but then you have like a, uh, a global a dependency, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really locked. So mm -hmm. In 
in a way, it may be better than uh, just have, you know, like a boundary mm -hmm. condition. Thanks. Good work, multi relations. Thank you.